Hello to everyone. My name is Elvira. I am one of leading experts in International School uh, of Argonauts. Uh, today we will do diagnostic of predestination for our guest, Alessandro Prevedi. Alessandro is uh, president of Association of Radionic in Italy. Thank you, Alessandro, for your participant. We appreciate you. Uh, uh, this diagnostic will be carried out by our leading um, uh, speaker, main coach of InfoVision in our school, Kamal Mustafa. Uh, Kamal, please tell us uh, about diagnostic, about predestination, about InfoVision, uh, and uh, what are we going to do today? Okay, uh, thank you, Elvira. Hello, everybody. So, uh, welcome uh, to our presentation of a diagnostic. Uh, that's actually what we will do today. It's uh, the thing that we actually do in our everyday job and day-to-day -day tasks. Uh, so we're not going to hide anything like exposed. And uh, um, hello to Alessandra, our hello. friend from Italy. How are you doing? I am fine. I'm very excited <laughs> to be here. Very good. So uh, basically today what uh, we're going to do is one of the primary tasks that our school does, one of the primary uh, sessions and things that we specialize on, it's the predestination diagnostic. Now what's predestination? Uh, the existence of a human, uh, if you look at yourself, if you look at the mirror, and sometime, sometimes in your life maybe you can ask a question like, what, what's all about, like, what is it all about, like, this world? Uh, what is it all about? What is, where is the meaning? Where is the meaning of the existence of the world? Where is the meaning of, the, of my existence? It's called the existential crisis. And uh, solving this uh, crisis is important. It is important because everything, uh, like how we believe in our school, that everything, every point in the universe has a certain meaning, has a certain purpose. And uh, I always compare the society to a clock, a mechanical clock. Imagine that uh, inside the mechanical clock, you have so many um, details and all of them work synchroni synchronously and simultaneously. And imagine that one of these details is not working well. The whole clock will, uh, will be pointing into the wrong uh, time. It will, be, uh, it will be a disaster. So imagine that we have a society and all these people in the society are just uh, like uh, details in, su in such a clock and imagine that uh, these details do not know their destiny they do not know how they should behave how they should work what is their task and uh, what will happen the whole society will go wrong and that's what's happening in our world so this cycle of hatred the cycle of destruction and devastation this you know loop uh, everlasting loop of um, re history repeating itself it's all because most of the people, unfortunately, until nowadays, they don't really know how they are designed. What is the main uh, like uh, engine inside your soul? What is the main like um, part, like main light in is that uh, basically settles your characteristic for your whole life. And uh, what we do in our school is uh, we study the human nature. So uh, like, what is human nature? Let's divide the human nature into three main parts. Uh, like the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, and what is beyond the subconscious mind. It's called the superconscious mind. Now, what is the conscious mind? Usually we say like, I'm conscious about that, or I'm not conscious about that. I was conscious about that. I wasn't conscious about that. What is the conscious mind? It is your state of mind now, in this moment. So right now I'm looking at my friends. Right now I'm giving a certain lecture. This is my state of mind now. So uh, you are looking at me, you are maybe drinking coffee at the same time and maybe a tea. This is the state of mind now. If you are sitting in the class, imagine or remember how you were in the school, you were sitting in the class and you were trying to pay attention to the teacher. It is the conscious mind. So you're trying to pay attention to the teacher now. You are trying to study, you're reading a certain book. You're doing this now. Everything that is done now simultaneously in this moment, everything 
uh, goes into the conscious part of the brain. So that's why people say I'm conscious about that, I'm aware about that, or I was not aware about that. Where your awareness, where your uh, like uh, conscious goes, this is basically the theme that you can tackle consciously right now. The subconscious mind, it's like the operating system of your body. So uh, it's, it is all these hidden processes that are going inside your mind when you're sleeping, when you are daydreaming, processing, reprocessing of information, sounds that you capture all around you, peripheral vision. So your sub, uh, subconscious mind, it uh, can capture much more information than the conscious mind, much more information, like thousands of bits of pieces of information, like thousands. But we are not aware of this information and it goes inside. For example, depression or uh, emotional state, it goes inside and chronically it grows inside the, sub the subconscious mind. And maybe consciously you're not aware about that. And until you suddenly realize that you are a very unhappy person. So the subconscious mind, it's everything about the hidden processes inside. If we go deeper, I'm not going to concentrate on the subconscious mind because this is, uh, it needs like a whole lecture. But if we go deeper, deeper than the subconscious mind, we will find something that is called the superconscious mind. Now in our school and in the Argonaut school, we claim uh, or we believe maybe, I don't know, that the superconscious mind is the soul of the human. That's how, that's how we call it. So uh, when in, uh, in our school, in, in our lectures, when you can uh, hear that we are take, talking about the soul, we, we mean the superconscious mind. Now, what is the superconscious mind? It is the deepest, deepest vaults inside your uh, nature. It is the center that actually takes uh, uh, the most difficult decisions because the conscious mind consciously uh, if somebody asks you, okay, do you want coffee? The conscious mind can, you know, handle this decision. It can check if the body wants the coffee, if you really, if you like the coffee, maybe if, you're, if you have preferences in coffee, it can check these preferences and then you say, okay, I, I want the coffee. But if we ask you about, you know, your major, which is a major part in our life, uh, you cannot consciously uh, tell it like from the start, there should be a certain desire that is coming from inside, from somewhere, from your heart, somewhere very deep. This is the superconscious mind. Now, um, our experts, and uh, today uh, our experts will be Elvira. She is uh, our leading expert, one of our leading experts in our school. Uh, she is uh, very professional. Uh, our school is... Um, uh, you know, concentrating all the time on the ability of the human to go through the conscious mind to the subconscious and then deeper, deeper inside the inner self and very deep inside through a certain technologies. And of course, it takes months to train. And that's what Elvira did. She trained for several years, I think, like uh, three to four years, maybe Elvira. Yes. Yes. Do, do, do you remember? Four years. Yeah. So uh, she is very professional and uh, look at uh, the magic in there. If a person, for example, me or a leader or someone, if uh, you, if you learn how to do this, if you will enter inside yourself, like very deep inside, you will, you will be able simultaneously to enter into the deep walls of any person in the, uh, in the universe, basically. Why? Because when you enter inside yourself, if you can achieve the state of superconscious mind through a certain meditations and technologies, you will synchronize yourself with any soul in, uh, in the universe. And uh, if you learn that, and that's what Elvira did, she was learning that for many years, you will be able to see how person acts consciously, how person acts subconsciously, like the body language, Okay, something that is, you know, inside that we, the person is not aware, but you can read it also. Uh, and uh, actually, she can see the soul of the human. And that's what I can do. And that's what every organot and uh, every professional in our school. You know, this is basically what we specialize in. So when we will enter 
the soul of Alessandra today. So we will study the superconscious mind of Alessandra. We will discover like her deepest secrets, fears, desires. And uh, if you ask me like um, uh, what Alessandra will, you know, like uh, what she will get from such a therapy. Uh, well, you know, sometimes it is difficult to live. It is difficult to solve problems. It is difficult to take decisions. What our superconscious wants, like the deepest desire, is always right. So it is the, the uh, it is like the center, like the informational center inside your nature, that is always right about you. Maybe it's not right about the universe. Maybe it has wrong perception about other people or circumstances or whatsoever. But your superconscious mind, it it is always on your side and it always wants you to progress. So it always gives you the right, uh, you know, like, uh, like uh, the right hints uh, for your life. It's always, it's always on your side. So again, a human, he can be smart, smarter, very smart. This is about the human. This is how we judge people. But if we return to the actual human, to his individuality, maybe he is not actually happy with his life, or maybe he is not actually happy with his job, even though he is successful in both of them. What happens? Well, uh, the person starts to ask himself, okay, so what I'm doing in this life? And the answer is inside the, in, the inner state of the superconscious mind, and the answer is unique to the actual person. That's what we call predestination. So if you ask my superconscious mind, the answer will be different, whether if you ask Alessandra's or Elvira's or any other person's superconscious mind, because the superconscious mind, it always holds the, what is right for you. As Elvira, please uh, uh, start. So show us uh, how actually you work. She will be using uh, like a certain techniques in order to enter uh, into the deepest walls of her superconscious mind. So the mask is needed only be, uh, for, uh, you know, for the concentration purposes. Other specialists use other things. Now in our school, we prefer to use the mask because it hides the light and because it helps the brain to go into a certain alpha rhythm or maybe deeper. And so what Elvira is doing right now is that she is entering gradually through a certain technology, through a very easy technology, into a very, uh, you know, like deep state of the superconscious mind. It is like auto-hypnosis. It is like auto-training. Just take some months and then it, uh, you know, and then the person can learn it. And when she does, he becomes like a certain uh, immortal object, informational object. And by synchronizing with Alessandra, she can actually start to see the soul of Alexandra. She can start to see what is the deepest uh, you know, like, okay, Alessandra, so uh, how are you? Are you ready? Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, very good. Okay, very good. Let's try. Let's try. Uh, Elvira, как у тебя ты зашла? Да, я вышла на кванту. Вообще кванта очень яркая. Очень яркая. И такое редко бывает. Um, я с ней пообщалась, она мне вот тут uh, ну, показывает поля, знаешь, она показывает какие-то mm -hmm. поля, вот такие, причем я вижу зеленые поля, зеленые uh, такие, поля. да, зеленые такие поля хорошие, ну, какая-то такая позитивная картинка. Mm -hmm. И Давай вообще, я ну, так бы такая она позитивная такая достаточно. Давай я переведу. So, uh, basically, I will uh, translate what Elvira said with a certain clarific uh, clarifications. Uh, in our school, we use uh, like slang. 
it's it's the same as you know like uh, pilots they use a slang like a professional slang professional language between the pilot between the airplane and the tower for example or another airplane in uh, for the communication purposes uh, so we use a certain slang and uh, when elvira was able to enter inside the deepest walls of uh, alessandra uh, she is telling me that she is seeing a very a bright spot. Now, the bright spot, uh, it is uh, actually the Alessandra, you know, like the fact of presence of Alessandra in the world on the time and space scale, if, 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 if you want to, on the, the space and time continuum, if you want uh, to, um, like to understand it this way, there is a spot that is called Alessandra. If we are, if we are uh, looking at the airplane visually, we can see a lot of details about the airplane. But if we are looking through a radar, we do not see the airplane visually. We do not see the airplane. It can be very far away. What we actually see is a point on a screen, on a screen of radar. We don't see the airplane, the actual airplane we see the information about the airplane. So that's how a revealer is working. So she is like a radar with the power of her, uh, you know, nature, with the power of her training. She is like a radar. She was able to spot Alessandra, which is a poem in the universe, just one point in the universe. As the same as she is one point in the universe, every, uh, every piece and bits of information is just one point in the universe. I am a point in the universe. She was able to spot the coordinates and the characteristics of this point, and she is explaining how uh, she sees it or what is the information that she is getting. So, so she said that this point looks happy, which is a positive characteristic. It is shining, which is a positive characteristic. Also, it is interactive. So Elvira was able to contact with this point, with the soul of uh, Alessandra, and there is, there is certain interaction, which is very rare, you know, like most of the people inside in their super conscious mind, they're not bright, not interacting, you know, like uh, they're uh, very uh, closed on themselves, you know, like psychologically. So uh, this is uh, basically till now, very good character, very good, exp you know, like, so it's a good image. It's a good image. It's, it's like a Alessandra, is giving a good first impression inside your soul, you know? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let's continue. Значит, поля зеленые, да? Что еще? Ну, я вышла на гида, и вообще гид очень доволен квантой. Он, знаешь, как бы такое ощущение, что как будто бы эта кванта возглавила как бы какую-то свою группу. Да. Группу вот, произошло... похожих квант, что ли, вот я не знаю, что это такое. Я понял, информационный пласт вас говорю. А спроси, она это сделала сейчас, вот, да, вот, ну, за эти вот полгода, год, или это, и, как бы, она это делает всю жизнь уже? Ну, эм... Вот такой процесс, да, такое, да. такого качественного возглавления, качественной работы, он пошел вот недавно достаточно. То есть это как бы такой более профессиональная, что ли, работа. А до этого... А, ну, как бы, знаешь, это не то, что там она как бы не возглавляла, а скорее это были как бы попытки, что ли, попытки подойти там как-то с разных сторон... И она как бы не охватывала весь пласт, можно так сказать. То есть она как-то вот с разных сторон пыталась, но вот такое прям вот как бы лиди, лидирование, вот ведение, да, такого не было. Но вот я фиксирую, что это именно за последнее время, то есть вот как мы делали диагностики, да, потому что до этого а, другая, другое состояние было совсем, совсем другое. Хорошо. Хорошо. Okay, Alessandra, so uh, Elvira is telling me that, uh, first of all, we have checked with the spiritual guide and let me briefly explain what is a spiritual guide, you know. Like imagine that you have a certain friend that is always trying to help you. Okay, like an imaginary friend that's trying to help you. 
maybe he does exist, maybe he doesn't exist, who cares? What uh, we really should care is that, you know, there is a guy that actually can help you. This is important. Uh, this is powerful. A lot of people are asking me, okay, who is the spiritual guide? And the answer is always simple. It is also a soul, it's also a part of the superconscious mind that knows better. And uh, it's, it's like a part, it's like a reference that, you know, uh, helps people in their lives. So for example, in the internet, we have Google. Uh, like on the other hand, if we didn't have Google, any kind of search engine, we would have to search for the web pages ourselves. Okay, now like when we had this Google or Yahoo search engine, the searching became easy. So the same thing exists inside the human nature. So if you're trying to search for the bits pieces of information, there is a certain search engine that can help you and call it the guide. Like we call it a guide. Now, some people tend to call it, uh, to, to call this uh, person or I don't know how, how, how to explain it, a person or a soul or a spirit. They tend to explain it uh, in a way that it's like, you know, a spiritual teacher or an angel protector. It's okay. Like you can call it whatever you want. I uh, prefer to call it in a modern language like, okay, every person, every soul has a certain guide. It's just a search engine. So if you are if you are unable to find something, you can ask your spiritual guide and he will help you to search it uh, because he sees better, you know, like he's like an engine that can search information in, from the universe. So uh, uh, basically your guide, Alessandra, is happy with you because uh, you are developing and you are, uh, you know, like you are uh, fulfilling your predestination much better than it was before. That's what, that's what he is telling me. So uh, you are now like uh, leading not only uh, like in um, Italy, in, in your colleagues, but you also acquired a certain opportunity to lead an informational structure of people. Like imagine that uh, in the world, we don't have uh, political uh, barriers. We don't have cultural barriers. We have, for example, one language and all the people know each other. Imagine that such uh, circumstances exist. So uh, all these people are now knowing that some person, some, you know, like uh, some particular person, Alessandra, is designed to help them fulfill their needs and desires. So that's what happened. Now, because in the real world, we have these borders, cultural borders, distance borders. So consciously, people don't see you. But in the super conscious mind, you are already connected to a lot of people, especially in your uh, career in your business. So what does it mean? I can ask if the spiritual guide is a part of us or it's uh, something different from us. Okay, the, uh, uh, like the science studying the human nature is endless like any kind of science. So uh, like if we ask a certain uh, physics teacher in the school, what is an electron? He can explain it will be a very good explanation. It will be it will be a right explanation. It wouldn't be a wrong explanation. But if we but if we ask a scientist, from example, CERN, what is an electron? He will tell you we don't know, because in reality nobody knows what is an electron. We can see the electron, the behavior of the electron empirically, but we don't really know the answer. What is an electron? What is the spin of the electron? How does the electron change? What is the electricity? What is the magnet? We don't really know exactly the nature of these uh, smallest particles because we are unable to see them and we can study them only empirically. Empirically, they work like that. Empirically, they behave like that. So the same uh, answer is for the spiritual guide. So is he part of us or not? We don't know. But empirically, we can observe that the spiritual guide is like a certain... Uh, informational structure that aims at helping you at all costs. So for example, if you are in danger, in a severe danger, 
he can actually influence the situation in order to help you and pull you out of the dangerous situation. At the same time, if you are, uh, or, or, any kind, or any other person, if he's very lazy in his life, and if he is, you know, like suffering from procrastination, he doesn't want to do anything, the guide will influence also in a way to pull you out of the situation. So let's imagine that a certain person is procrastinating. For example, he has a rich father and he's procrastinating and he's doing nothing at all in this life. How the, the guide would act? Empirically, we were observing thousands of cases and we, we had seen that the guide actually uh, provokes certain conditions, certain circumstances in a way that this person loses all his money. Why? Because he wants to provoke this person to go and work, to go and develop, to go and, uh, you know, like mm, explore himself, explore what's happening around him and in the world. This is what is important for the development of the human. So empirically, we can say that the spiritual guide Let's just, uh, let's just, you know, like stop at this point that, and uh, like make a certain, you know, like uh, uh, theory that the spiritual guide is just a program inside our human nature that provokes us for the development. It like provokes the development inside. Is it a part of us or is it a certain guide from the cosmos? We don't know. Like we cannot be sure until now. Maybe in the future we will make a more thorough scientific study and we will have a full answer to this question. But right now that's how it works and we are fine with that. Okay, and uh, continuing about the spiritual guide. One of the best books that explores uh, or exposes this information about the spiritual guide is written by Michael Newton uh, it's called The Journey of the Souls. Uh, I think another book is called like Destiny of the Soul, maybe, and Life Between Lives. So who was Michael Newton? He was a professional hypnotherapist. He was putting his, um, you know, like um, patients in a very deep state of hypnosis. In our school, I do not put the uh, experts into hypnosis. I teach them auto-hypnosis technologies. So, uh, and inside, the, inside this book, uh, that was written by Michael Newton, you can find a lot of interesting information about the spiritual guides. It is, you know, you know, like I love this book that uh, the author, he doesn't really give a lot of his own theories about the subject. He just studies what he can see, what he can study and exposes this information. And that's it. It's a very good book. Another good book that I recommend to read is called ESP Wars, East and West. It was written by uh, an old Soviet uh, professional, uh, professional spy, and an uh, American uh, professional spy that were using the abilities of the mind in espionage. And they, uh, they also, like, uh, you know, exposed this information. It was, uh, it was so long ago that it's no longer secret. And I really love this book. And uh, 21st century, in my opinion, will be you know, like it will put a certain point uh, in the question about what is the energetical world? What is the spiritual world? It will, I think that in the 31st century, we will solve this problem and we will put a certain, uh, you know, like um, guidelines. So instead of putting you in the uh, deep hypnotical state for you to see the uh, spiritual world, because it will take like hours and it will be very difficult and you have to be prepared. We use the expert that is already trained fair enough to enter the spiritual world in a safe way and to return and to make a certain, uh, like, uh, you know, like perform certain tasks. So let's continue with Elvira. Uh, Elvira, what do you think is more interesting? Ну, допустим, по... Да, я прошлась по оболочкам, информацию собрала. Да. В общем, по первое, ну, то есть я вижу, что в принципе кванта как-то, знаешь, пытается все это выстроить, да, вот эти все свои структуры. Я думаю, что у нее получилось бы лучше, если бы она знала как, да, но, в общем-то, я вижу, что и такие попытки есть. Первая оболочка такая, ну, 
такая ну, радужная достаточно, но она как бы не очень ровная, да, но она, по крайней мере, не дырявая, она, в общем-то, сама по себе равномерная. Но я бы сказала, что это она такая неплохая, неплохое качество вот у первой оболочки. Во второй оболочке я вижу попытки строительства вот крепости, да, мой дом, моя крепость, вот как бы идет этот Молодец. процесс. процесс идет. Молодец. Да, в третьей оболочке эм, вот э, я сначала не очень понимала, то есть я вижу, что здесь как-то маловато пластов и вот не освоено, да, но потом э, я так поняла, что видимо, видимо здесь просто вот как бы располагается тот пласт, который она э, ведет, да, ага. а, то есть вот он как бы практически занимает всю третью оболочку, наверное, вот так, не знаю, правильно это или нет, но вот вместо вот этих пластов тут, по сути, вот один этот огромный пласт, как-то так. А, по четвертой оболочке я вижу, что вот она немного, ну, как бы идет преобладание интересов человечества над духовными, Отлично. такое идет небольшое, ну, хотя это не сильно, да, немножечко, как бы я вижу, такое идет некоторое давление на духовные интересы, вот так вот. Да. Что касается пятой оболочки, здесь явно доминирует третья цивилизация, прям явно. Отлично. Ну и, видимо, это вот коррелирует с тем, что э, есть пласт, да, есть как бы да. лидирующая позиция в пласте, ну и, соответственно, и третья цивилизация тоже вполне логично да. представляется. Вот, еще, еще я вижу, что, в принципе, вот кванта, она как бы может перемещаться. Как бы я вижу, что она иногда вот перемещается по оболочкам. Как Отлично. Вот. То есть вот Отлично. такое вот есть. Отлично. Прекрасно. Прекрасно. Пока рассмотри э, как бы связи, да, вот э, системы э, дополнительной информации рассматриваю. Я пока немножко пообщаюсь mm -hmm. с Александрой. Окей, uh, okay, Александра, so another bunch of uh, good news for you. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, like, um, if, uh, let's imagine that a certain drop of water is going into a water tank, and when it drops on the water tank, waves go around. The same thing happens with the uh, people's, uh, you know, souls. So it's like a droplet, it's like a point in the universe, it's vibrating, and when it is vibrating, it's creating a certain you know, like uh, uh, waves around uh, in, the, in the field, in the, in, the, in the ether, in the universe. So uh, in other schools, these waves, like the upper wave, uh, like the upper wave threshold, they call it uh, subtle bodies, like astral, mental, uh, buddhical, whatever, whatever. And uh, these are traditional names for these, you know, like subtle bodies. In our school, we don't use them because when we speak about the subtle bodies like astral, mental, etherical, etc., uh, you know, like uh, we have connection with chakras, we have direct connection with certain energies, direct connection with certain deities. This is the philosophy developed by the humanity till now about these subtle bodies. Now, our task of our school is to re paraphrase, rephrase the philosophy in a way that can be understandable and applicable in the 21st century, which is very difficult. You know, it's very, it's very difficult, it's not easy. So when I explain the, these energetical wavelengths, I explain it like, like the example of the droplet. So it just goes from, uh, you know, like uh, up and down, goes to the water tank, and when it drops in the water tank, certain waves happen. So uh, now, of course, you are not a droplet of water. You are a, a certain human. You have a certain uh, ambitions. You have a certain psychology. Everything, if we can imagine that this is like a droplet of information, it hits the informational plane and a certain waves happen. Now, we, uh, we are studying how many waves are going out of this droplet. Until now, we have the information about 25 layers. However, uh, for the good living of a human in the human world, we need maximum six and optimal three. So usually we study like three to six wave 
waves around the humans like or, or the subtle bodies or whatever you can call them and it will be enough now each of these waves when they uh, when they appear they uh, hold a certain meaning and if elvira sees certain colors in these waves certain fragments in these waves certain you know like interaction behavior of these waves we can analyze the information about uh, the actual you know. and the good news for you is that actually your soul is trying to be more active in order to make these waves um, like you know more uniform in a better way now the better are the waves around you the better is the health and psychology for example a lot of people have panic attacks and they produce a lot of you know negative waves and when the, these waves hits uh, when a wave uh, propagates in the universe and it hits a certain border it returns that's why we have this concept of karma you know like if you do something bad it will return to you yes because if you do something bad the wave is negative it will hit a certain board a border and it will return to you the same thing happens with every person so if the more you are active the more you you know like you are conscious about yourself the more you have uh, like um, a certain stable psychology the wave goes back in a more stable way people tend to ask the god to make them happy the reality is different you have to be happy, like you have to behave as a happy person in order to acquire happiness all the motivation books tell you that you should follow your heart and your mind and you should be happy it's not enough now in our school we take a more practical approach there is a te technical way that we will do right now in order to synchronize these interests of the heart and of the mind in a way that all of them will feed your interests that all of them will feed your human life and spiritual life and etc and it is the easier way is to do it technically with the help of elvira with the help of expert i will explain the subtle world it's like bricks a lot of bricks a lot of bricks what can you do with these bricks you can build anything you want you can build a castle you can build a catapult you can build a palace you can build um, a garden i don't know whatever so if we learn how to put these bricks in a certain way these bricks will change the human nature okay so it will like uh, change the actual human so uh, how many times i was dreaming about a certain you know button that i can just click on this button and go sleep for 8 hours without having any kind of headaches and without having any kind of uh, tension because if you work all the day and then you go to sleep your brain is still working you cannot stop and that's what we actually do in our school we take a practical approach so where is this button we found this button we learned how to use it and so we just put our heads on the uh, pillow we click this button and you know we sleep until tomorrow so this is how we work there are a lot of buttons inside the human nature if you click on them in the right way you get the right uh, you know like um, circumstances the right thing so motivational books tell you you have to be happy i uh, i argonati i will tell you another thing there is a certain button you click it you become happy and that's it easy so let's do this elvira как у нас там дела а ну я ещё изучила принтеры основные вот например по земляному принтеру я вижу что есть какая-то такая связь хорошая именно с первой средой потому что я вижу что тут вот у этой кванты есть как бы такое некий фундамент, что ли, вот именно укрепление снизу какое-то вот такое наполнение. А вот, например, зеленый принтер, я вижу, что он изначально как бы хороший, то есть у него такая базовая программа хорошая, 
Но я бы все-таки обратила на него внимание, потому что он работает на своем базовом ресурсе, и, на мой взгляд, ему не хватает пластичности. Вот как-то я бы над пластичностью его поработала. Хотя пока что он не вызывает нареканий, но я бы уделила ему внимание, конечно, в этом плане. Угу. По черному принтеру тоже хорошо работает, но и как бы обширное, обширные знания, то есть, но я бы сказала, что не хватает немножко глубины проникновения, что ли, то есть больше как-то вот первые там верхние уровни информации, вот как-то вот он так работает, как-то глубину тяжеловато ему, или он просто так не умеет, я не знаю. Вот, mm -hmm. ну желтый принтер. Ну, я бы сказала, что он работает вот, э, ну, на, по полной, на полный весь потенциал, но сам по себе Отлично. он недостаточно большой, просто я бы его, я бы потенциал я, его увеличила. Я э, хочу посмотреть, пообщайся с ее, с, ну, высшим я, с ее квантой, и спроси, она, только пусть честно ответит, она уже дошла до первой оболочки, то есть она использовала этот ресурс, не пора ли нам Пора, как говорится, выходить на вторую, третью. Это она и хочет. Как она считает, она использовала уже ресурс первой оболочки, как бы этот объем своего сознания? Или еще нет? Ну, она близка к этому уже. Отлично, отлично. Хорошо. Ну что ж, я переведу. Окей. Okay. About uh, returning to the fields, to the subtle bodies of the human nature. So, uh, uh, as I told you, the, we found 25 layers, but we don't study 25 layers because, you know, like, it's too much for a modern human. The first three layers are the most important. The first layer is about, it's all about your individuality. So, also, it's all about, you know, like, the amount of energy and resources that you were born with. It's very important. The second, it's the amount of energy and resources that you get when you live your life. It's a huge potential, huger. The third level, it's all about the energy and resources that you can get from the human society, from the human world. It's, it's a, uh, like, it's very huge in dimensions. Um, we were measuring them even in meters. So the first body, it's about one meter and a half, and it varies. The second body, it's, it's, it can be even larger, like maybe 30, 60 meters. 200 meters, 700 meters in some cases. And the third body is more than a uh, thousand meters, more than a thousand meters can reach even to uh, hundreds of kilometers. Anyway, uh, it's, uh, you know, like the distances of the bodies, it's not really important. What is more important is the structure inside of them. It's like the meaning of each body. When a person develops, when you develop your life, for example, Alessandro, you're living your life, you are consuming the potential of your first body and what happens with people when they reach a certain age, they reach this limit and that's it. Now, uh, when people reach this limit, we start, you know, to have crises, middle age crisis, all these things happen. So what, what we have to do, we have to jump to the second level of energy, to the second body and consume the energy from the first, use it, utilize it, and utilize the power from the second also. What happened, what, what's now happening with you, is that you, had, you have reached the levels, the maximum levels of the development of your individuality. So the program of your individuality, Alessandro Pervedi, it is maximum fulfilled. Now, in order to increase your potential and gain new potential, you have, uh, uh, you know, your, your, like your soul, It has to change a little bit its mindset and you have to change a little bit your mindset and go into a huge and larger level, which is not easy if we speak, but as I'm saying you again, that in Argonati school, we take a more practical approach. So there is just a bunch of buttons that we have to click and you will regain a new level. So uh, Alessandra, again, We had reached our full potential of Alessandra 
prevede in this life. Now you have to change a little bit to become huger. So you uh, you had a huge potential. You became a president of a certain association. It's thousands of hours of work. I uh, respect you for that. Now the new program has to start. So um, I think you can agree with me that you actually are you're actually reaching or maybe you had reached your actual potential. But the dreams are not over. You still have these desires and dreams, true. So we need huge resources, another type of resources. It's the same as we, we are building a city for a thousand people and then the amount of population increases. We have to increase the city. We have to rebuild the city in a way and then it becomes uh, populated with millions of people. We have to increase the potential. We have to rebuild it. That's what's happening with you and that's what we will do. We will help you, uh, you know, acquire this new energy level. Okay. So uh, uh, right now, we unfortunately, we'll be unable to explain everything that we do because it needs like thousands of lectures and thousands of, uh, you know, like hours of training. But I will explain the basic stuff. So again, uh, if we study the human nature, if you go inside any political science class, the first thing that your instructor will ask you your opinion is the human nature, good or bad? So by nature, people are born good or bad. Do they tend to behave in a good way or bad way? That's what your uh, political science instructor will ask you first thing that, uh, you know, like the first thing that you will tackle in the class. This is needed to determine if you are more into realist views about the political science and the world, or you are more into uh, liberal or maybe constructivist views or whatever. So realists, they tend to think that uh, people are always, uh, you know, tending to have their interests fulfilled. Anyway, anyway, uh, in your case, uh, I can conclude that your inner self, your soul is shining, which is good. Like it means that you still have a huge program in your life. It's, it means that you have still this inner drive for living. I would also recommend a, a book to read. It's called Ikigai. It's, uh, it's a book written by two uh, American, if I'm not mistaken, scientists that were studying, you know, like anthropologists, they study the, the nature of the people, the human nature, and they were traveling a lot and they found this concept in Japan, like the concept of Ikigai which is the, you know, like the driving force for you to live and to live long and uh, to succeed. It's like the inner motivator. And uh, this, is, uh, this is actually what we call a soul in uh, the school of Argonaut. And the first thing that I have to conclude is that this motivation, inner motivation, is in a good position, which is very good. Sometimes when we see our clients and we see that the inner motivation, it's not high, there is nothing we can do. The program of life is starting uh, to go to an end. And so we just tell the client that we are sorry. We will try whatever you want, but you are not motivated inside. And we will try to motivate the inner self as much as we can. But it also, you know, it's also like uh, depends on the human, depends on his perspective of life, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, uh, we try as much as we can, but if the inner motivation is low, there is nothing we can do. What we can actually do if the person wants it, if there is some light in the soul and he wants to get inner inside, motivated more, to get more, more, more and fulfill the project of his life even more, we can help. Uh, let me uh, summarize. The third thing that is very important is that your guide is happy about you, which means it's, it's, very, it's very profitable, you know, like it's something really good. Okay, so some, some guy that exists in the subtle world and uh, his aim is to help you, he's happy with you. It's amazing. So we can ask him many things and his main role is in finding, finding information, money, finding contacts, finding happiness, whatever you want. It's like finding. If you're trying to find something, the guide will have. 
and the connection between you and your spiritual guide is good. So that's amazing. You have the opportunity to jump to a new energy level. This is also a good positive factor. This is uh, another positive factor is that you still have this inner powerful drive. So these are three main things that can tell me as an, uh, as an ana uh, analyst and uh, analyze this information. It can tell me that if uh, you put targets in your life, you have a better chance in achieving them than others. Okay. So now, right now, Alessandra, if you thought about any kind of dreams or targets that you have, you can try and tell me about them, summarize them in a certain way. And what we will do is that we will help you using our technologies, mobilize these programs in the world in a way that will feed you, in a way that will help you achieve this thing. So, Alessandra, did you think about, do you have any kind of wishes? <laughs> I'm like a fairy tale now. Can make the, Elvira is like a fairy tale now. <laughs> I, I have so so many projects that I have uh, I don't know what to choose but uh, I will choose one um, uh, I would like to find a way to to find uh, uh, something for the mad people for uh, psychiatric uh -huh. uh, disorders uh, uh -huh. uh, it's uh, something that uh, always I have uh, um, thought as something that was not uh, solved in, uh, in all these people that is yes. uh, crazy, no? yeah. that is uh, schizophrenic, that has so many problems living in the streets or uh, a lot of problems. So with uh, my um, radionics tools uh, or uh, dowsing or what I do, um, I would like to find a way to help this kind of uh, people. Amazing. It's, uh, something strange. <laughs> but uh, uh, I have so many projects. This is one. Uh, this is not strange. It's a very noble, uh, it's a very noble cause. Look, the more the, the, more the, the wish, l let, me, let me be honest with all of you. The more you have noble causes, the better the subtle world, the better the spiritual world will help you. Because, you know, let us leave uh, every negative uh, thing that's happening in the world aside and let's think about something positive. All the positive things are noble causes. Well, this is a very good noble cause. Let's, let's make it. Let's make it. Let's uh, do our best. Elvira, ты слышала запрос? Отличный запрос. Прекрасно. Это то, что нужно. Ну что ж, я, например, готов мобилизовать все, что вообще существует для выполнения этой задачи. Давай это сделаем. Ты готова? Слышно? Mm -hmm. Да. Да. Ну, у меня немножко хромает связь, но да, сейчас слышно, да. Отлично, ничего страшного. Выйди обратно на кванту. Значит, mm -hmm. скажи ей, что мы сейчас будем делать именно вот этот запрос. То есть надо постараться найти какое-то решение для ну, вот этих моментов. Mm -hmm. Да, да. Хорошо. Значит, теперь значит, мы делаем два этапа. Я предлагаю сделать в двух вариантах. Начнем с варианта первого. Есть. И в этом состоянии, вот как оно есть... Как вот Александр сказал, это вполне правильно. Запусти эту информацию как желание, как программу, и мобилизуй все эти точки под выполнение этой задачи. Нет, тут, конечно, много задействовано. Много людей, не только больные. Отлично. Надо... И мы возвращаемся вместе с Александрой на место, в ее оболочке, и начинаем к ней это все подключать. Также у нее есть информационный пласт. Это именно ее радионика. И, соответственно, туда это мы заземляем, подключаем. То есть это место, где это информационный как бы, конгломерат будет, что-то там будет накапливаться, что-то проходить сквозь, 
что-то будет накапливаться, трансформироваться, использоваться. Это хороший проект. И там вот как ну идет у тебя запусти. То есть тут самое главное... Вот этот запрос, он как бы не может, он не ограничивается только исцелением душевно больных. Да. Это скорее как бы вообще оно связано с изучением именно сознания человека и поведенческой психологии, да, то есть вообще вот uh -huh. эти вот моменты. И дело в том, что вот эта информация действительно изучается, но это нужно и для управления и так далее, то есть это очень важное. И здесь вот как бы в плане химии, да, химия такая существует для исцеления всяких разных больных. Вот, ну, химия, видимо, дело не только в химии. Тут как бы такое идет переплетение интересов, очень такое мощное, то есть оно как бы очень неоднозначно, mm -hmm. то есть не только химия. Тут очень много именно э, ну, смежных, смежных отраслей, связанных с изучением сознания человека. Вот тут как бы задействовано. Отлично. Вот как раз это то, что нужно. Надо постараться. Ну, он наполнился людьми, прям, как бы я бы сказала, что там кишня вот какая-то, кишит ага, людьми. Отлично. Хорошо. Отлично. Такая здесь, как, как это сказать, такое напол... ну, как активация, вот какое-то слово хотела сказать, типа какой-то кипиш, что ли, я не знаю, вот как бы кипит, как будто все. Отлично. Отлично. Хорошо. В то, же время, в то же время я вижу, что э, это как бы не нарушает, скажем так, границ. Э, то есть, ну, как я это фиксирую, именно то, что границы этого пласта не нарушаются, это значит, что он не повреждается, и все в рамках как бы закономерности этого пласта происходит. Отлично. 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 Отлично, прекрасно. Хорошо. Теперь, когда ты все замкнула, обратись к Ванте Александре. Она довольна, счастлива, все нормально? Да, она довольна очень. Хорошо. Вообще, ей очень нравятся все эти люди. Вообще, я так вижу, что... Ну, она любит, да, очень много людей, любит много людей, mm. то есть вот ей нравится, нравится это очень. Вот и отлично. Окей, okay, Александра, so basically what we had made today is that we started a very uh, huge process. It's not only about you, it's not only about radionics, it's about, you know, like just finding this Uh, the solution for uh, this problem and uh, you know we mobilized it we mobilized our need for this solution if the need is not shown if the desire of people is not uh, you know like emitting the energy into the cosmos the cosmos the uh, spiritual world will not answer what we did is that we mobilized your interest it's a noble cause with a lot of interest of other people that are always uh, that are also thinking like you in a noble cause. We mobilized this interest into one bunch and we sent this uh, like huge ball of information and energy into the cosmos and we mobilized the universe to help the whole humanity. This is very important. I really hope that we will find answers for uh, you know like this uh, thing. Uh, 